Hello everyone. In this set of videos, we're going to begin our discussion of red black trees. Red black trees are a way to implement a binary search tree to guarantee certain conditions about the height of the tree so that our runtimes are better than they might have been for some of our other methods. So let's discuss how we're going to do that. Here we have a bunch of properties about what a red black tree is. Most of them are really straightforward. The first is every node is either red or black, so we're going to be storing some sort of color somewhere. The root is always going to be colored black. Every single leaf is going to be nil and be black. So what that means is that the leaves of our tree are actually not the nodes storing data, but they will always be the nil pointers. So we're going to have to be a bit careful with some of our wordings there. Then we have that if a node is red, then both of its children must be black. And then the last one is the most mathematical one, and it's also one of the more important ones, which says, for each node, all simple paths from the node to descendant leaves contain the same number of black nodes. So, this is a bit hard to understand without looking at a picture, so let's look at our example. Here we have an example of a red black tree. I've colored the nodes red and black, and also I've made all of the black nodes circles and the red nodes squares to make this sort of hybrid of if you are having difficulty seeing the colors, there's also the shape to go by. This is a common approach is to use some sort of different signifier rather than color because you don't always have access to color when you're designing these. So let's check. Is every node either red or black? Yes, it is. All of the leaves are these little nil pointers there. And every single one of them is nil. We don't have any leaves that are dangling. Now we need to check, does every single red child have both of its children being black? So here's a red one. Both of its children are black. Red node with two black children. Red node, the leaves are black, so that's handy. Same thing here, that's a leaf. Yep, this one over here, same story, same story, same story. So that property seems to be okay. And now we need to check, does every single path have the same number of black nodes. So from 26, if I go down all the way to the left here, this path has has one, two, three, four black nodes. And now all I need to do is check, are there any paths that do not have four black nodes? So this path there I've done. If I did the same thing but went down to the other leaf, that's okay. If I did this path here, that's the same. This path there has one, two, three, four. 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 Two, three, four. One, 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 two, three, four. Four and four. Yep, all of them do. And now I've created the sort of strange breed of lichen here or something like that. This is just spread out across the entire tree. It's a bit awkward, but this does satisfy all the properties. So this is our example of a red black tree. Let's clean up the picture so it's a little better to look at. How exactly does this balance the height of the tree? We'll see this a bit later, but the idea is that if we ever are going to break things, we would be adding too many black nodes to one side of the tree and we'd have to adjust and make some nodes red to compensate. That is going to be the balancing act is whenever we're going to add too many black nodes and make the tree imbalanced, we'll need to convert some to red nodes to allow it to be more balanced. So I will mention that most people don't bother drawing the tree in this way. This is awful. Most people, what they will do is they will not draw all those pointers and they will draw a more simple tree like this one and just know that all of the leaves are actually nil. The one thing to be careful of is there are several nodes, like 16 and 19, that are not leaves, but do have nil pointers because they have one child. About nodes with one child, so that we don't make a sort of bad uh, assumption when we are finding out if this is a red-black tree. So. Let's go down and examine another red black tree, but it's not. This, this tree here is not a red black tree. There are several ways in which it could not be a red black tree. Some of them are easy, such as the color. They all have color, so we're fine. So it's gonna be one of the more sophisticated uh, assumptions we're making. 
I'm gonna keep filibustering here for a second to let you guys try and find out why this is not a red black tree and then I will go over it. And I'm gonna keep talking for a little bit to make sure that you actually pause the video and try to do this on your own so you can get a bit of practice with it. Hopefully having now paused the video and gone through this, let's find out what's happening. First, the easiest thing to check is probably to find if there are any red nodes with, two, with a child that is also red. So this node seems good. Seems good, seems good, seems good, seems good, seems good, seems good, seems good. So that, that property isn't it. So almost certainly our property is going to be the number of black nodes. I see an easy one over here. This on the right has one, two, three, four, which means every single one needs to have four. So now if I can find one with more than four or one with less than four, I can guarantee this is not a red black tree. So on the right, we have one, two, three, four. We have one, two, three, four. We have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, so it's not a red black tree because of this path over here. Let's highlight it. This path. That path has too many black nodes, so this is not a red black tree. One thing to note is I was counting those extra leaves. You don't have to as long as you are careful. So this path, 46, 40, 29, then down to this empty one here, I would need to make sure to count that. And this is where I wanted to mention that we need to be careful, like I said up here, for these internal nodes with one child, when we're considering whether or not it is a red black tree and our properties, we still need to consider these nil pointers here and make sure that we consider those paths for checking the colors. So you do need to be a bit careful. With that in our mind, Let's try and color one on our own. So I've been giving you the red black trees so far. Let's try and color this one. And again, I'm gonna let you guys try this on your own. This is a fun little game you can kind of do. And we can hopefully figure this out. So I'm gonna keep talking for a little bit to make sure that this happens and we will see what happens. All right, hopefully you did this now. Let's notice first that this node is an internal node and this node is an internal node, but they only have one child. So we might need to be cautious about those. The first thing I can do that's always going to be straightforward is I could color the root black. I used the black highlighter there. Alternatively, I could also just circle it in black. Those are two common ways that we do this. Now, if I wanted to, I might say, well, let's just color them black and see how bad it gets. So if I do this and do this and do this and do this and do this, and do this. So assume that they are all black nodes and then fix it as we go. First, let's notice what is the shortest path from the root to a leaf. The shortest path from a root to a leaf is goes 20, 26, nil. So that path can have at most three black nodes, the root, 26, and then the leaf. Therefore, this path over here, 20, 26, 30, then this root, uh, leaf, it must have that same number. So I actually can't color 32 to be black, I must color it to be red. Because now, this path, 20, 26, and then nil, and 20, 26, 32, and then nil, both have two black nodes in them. Now, let's try and make that same reasoning on the left. Over here, 20, 13, 16, nil has too many black nodes, so what if I colored 13 to be red? Now, I have 20, 13, 16, nil, all of those have two black nodes in them, so that's good. Now how about 20, 13, 8, 5, nil? That has far too many. But I can't color 8 to be red. I have to color 5 to be red if I want to get rid of one of the black nodes. Because I cannot have either of the children of 13 be red. Now let's check every single path. This one has two. This one has two. This one has two. That one has two. Seems like we're good. So this is a way to color this. And again, maybe if we wanted to be more precise, we would circle these nodes to show off the color a little bit better because that gray is not necessarily black. And maybe to be consistent with my other scheme, we would draw a square around these guys. And now we have colored this as a red black tree. The question that you might ask is, can this always be done? I'm gonna leave that for you guys to try to figure out can you come up with a binary search tree that cannot be colored as a red black tree? This is a good challenge for yourselves to make sure you one, understand the definitions and two, you can work with these things in a meaningful way. 
Having introduced red black trees, the next thing we're going to do is everybody's favorite thing. We're going to prove that they are correct and that they accomplish the goal that we want them to. So that'll be our next step that we need to do.